Three weeks ago today, newly elected Pennsylvania Democratic Senator John Fetterman returned to Capitol Hill. He'd been at Walter Reed Hospital since mid-February, receiving treatment for clinical depression. Fetterman suffered a stroke nearly one year ago, four days before the primary election, and he has been open about his struggles with the aftermath. I sat down with the senator in Washington to talk about his tough road to recovery. You've said that your toughest time was after you got elected to the Senate, which most people would think, hey, that should have been one of the great moments of his life. But that's when your world started to collapse. That's what's so insidious about the depression. The, the depression, you know, you might win and you still feels like you lose. Our family and I, we were through this grueling campaign, and now you've won. And now, like, what's wrong with us? Or is it not enough for us? You know, why do you feel this way? And I, I, I tried to explain to them where it's just like, you know, it, it's different. You know, you know, just because, you know, winning doesn't mean that it still didn't hurt still. I laid there and, and watched this hurt my own children because they were confused because they thought just because you won, you know, why, why aren't you, you should be happy. Can you talk about um, your decision to seek help, to go to Walter Reed? What was sort of the triggering event for you? I'll never forget the, 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 the decision where it, it's like, if I don't do something to claim my life, that this could be, you know, tragic. I was skeptical. Uh, you know, and I was, I was, you know, kind of like, no, no, I don't really belong here or whatever, but I'll you know, give it one last chance. Now, as he is seeking help for depression, his wife Giselle tweeting, after what he's been through in the past year, there's probably no one who wanted to talk about his own health less than John. I'm proud of him for asking for help and getting the care he needs. You just said, talked about being skeptical that you could get help. Could you talk about... I think that's an attitude that men may have even more than women. Men don't seek treatment as much as women do. This isn't a matter who's tough or who's not. I'm a little, you know, I have the blues or I have a little melancholy and, and I would just beg men, you know, you know, you're not too macho, you know, it's no big deal. You're the only thing, person you're really gonna hurt more than anyone else is you're actually your family. Did you get inspiration from people like Lincoln and Churchill, who struggled with depression yeah. their whole lives and yet fought through it and changed the world. I would say there's almost kind of like a nobility to it, like what well, are suffering. You know, there's some nobility to that. Or, you know, and I, so maybe something, it, 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 it toughens you up or whatever, but, <laughs> but it, it didn't toughen me up. You know, in fact, it, 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 it nearly ruined me. And I know it put my, my family through a lot of pain. When did you start to think, hey, I may be making progress here. I may be able to put one foot in front of the other, in front of the other, and, and, and move forward with my life. My first visit was uh, my children, you know, back after three weeks. And my dad had left me these little post-it notes, big of them. All my kids grabbed, grabbed them up and then wrote, like, you know, encouraging notes everywhere, wherever, and just you know, dozens of these things all in my room. And, and it became kind of like, that's what sparked my idea that it's like there's a whole big, big reason to get better. Me putting my kids through the scaring of, of, of losing me or what's, what's wrong, you know, really was the single biggest motivation to, to really take it on. And I have a lot of support. And I was ashamed, you know, that an eight-year-old Boyle was, had, had the kind of enthusiasm and you got this dad, you know? Like I was the guy that should be the one cheering for them on and encouraging them. But no, it was the children that were, that were, were, were doing all that. And, and they didn't hold it against me. You know, they let their love came through. It was just the, that single thing, the, 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 the catalyst. I saw you when you first came on the Hill, when you were getting sworn in. And I remember thinking at the time, that this is tough enough for anybody to adjust to life on the Hill. I could not imagine the pain you had to be in adjusting to the challenges after your stroke, adjusting to being 
this big guy, this take charge leader who suddenly had all of these new challenges coming at you so quickly. It had to be so isolating. No, it's, it's really the truth. And, and, and then another thing that was very punishing uh, that time, too, is, is that there was uh, the, the social media blowtorch unleashed on my, on my family as well, too, on that. Unleash whatever you want to on me, but, but you know, on my family. I, I just can't imagine anybody that would think it would be funny to, to, to make f- fun of children or, or whatever. I remember uh, late in the campaign seeing one of your ads. If you ever got knocked down to get back up? If anyone lives in any community that was left behind, ever got knocked down, that's what this campaign is about. It was one of the most powerful campaign ads I've ever seen. And you were talking about people who were forgotten, people who were struggling to get by. It showed you talking on stage, talking about your struggles and then showed them in the audience. And there was this powerful connection. I wonder, does this draw you even closer to all those people, not only in Pennsylvania, but across America that feel like they're isolated, they're alone, they've been left behind by Washington? Absolutely, absolutely, Joe. I will never ever tire of wanting to pay it forward to having the gift. Because you can't possibly, ex- you can't fully uh, appreciate t- to being well then after realizing, you know, at a very dark place that I was there. And there's a lot of people, it, it makes, it, it hurts. We are learning that Senator John Fetterman is now out of the hospital after being treated for clinical depression. And his message, he says, is that depression is treatable and treatment works. So many people don't get quality health care treatment. What does a Senate, what does a House, what does a president need to do to give more people a fighting chance with depression, with anxiety, with suicidal ideations? This is not a Democratic issue. This isn't a Republican issue. This isn't a hard right, hard left. This was just a human issue. There's somebody living right now in a red county that desperately needs, you know, mental health. And there is a person in a blue county that needs to make somebody to speak to because they're thinking, you know, harming themselves, you know. And we all need to be created a national priority, you know. And I would tell anybody that's watched this, is like, I'm begging you, please go look for your treatment. It works. And it's what saved me from, uh, from, from, my, from my anguish. Mm. 